Liverpool drew 1-1 with Leeds last night. Uh, did Leeds United deserve that equaliser? Yeah, they did. If you look, if you watch the game, they were they were slowly starting to get on top. Their aggression was getting the best of us. I think we looked a little bit tired and leggy towards the end, as um, as you saw uh, Mane come off towards the end. Um, I don't think our press is as as is it, as intense as it has been before, but this season's been a bit weird, so we just deal with it. Yeah, I, I don't understand what happened because there was. We dominated the first half, we came out the second half and carried on dominating. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason around the hour mark, we couldn't get out our own box. Yeah, it's like you hit a brick wall. Um, like, like, you how, could how see, you could see, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could see the tide changing a little bit. You could see people tiring. You could see people getting caught on the ball, probably taking one or two many touches. Um, and it was just, you could see it happening. And they, they started that. And I think they could see it as well. And that's when the tide started changing and they, they were really putting the pressure on uh, and obviously got their equaliser. I mean, despite the disappointing results, are there any positives to take for Liverpool here? We didn't lose. <laughs> <laughs> so we can for all these things. <laughs> But no, I think I think you're when you're trying to chase that top four. As long as you're not losing, obviously you would you would have preferred the three points. But as long as you're not losing, it's it's a, it's a major thing, isn't it? Um, I think Trent did did well um, defensively, so so. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think you, in the first half we showed that even though. Um, Salah wasn't on the pitch. He's still going to go out there and create chances. He's still going to get at, at, at teams. But then Salah coming on shows he, he does make a difference as well. But it's great to see that we could actually change it up a little bit as well. But was this another game where it was just good ideas, good chances and woeful execution? I think so. I think so. Um, which, which, which you don't really tag uh, Liverpool with, really, when you're saying woeful execution. When you look at... Um, I think last season or this couple of last couple of seasons over exceeded when it comes to actually chances. I think um, especially when it comes to Mane, he over exceeded with his the chances that he's actually had, and especially the half chances he scored more. He scored more half chances than anyone else. When when everyone else is missing them chances, he's the one scoring them. So and now to come to a point where it's caught it's catching up with them where they're not actually taking them half chances now. Yeah, it, it, it's. I just say it, it's mystifying because, like, we, we've seen Mo Salah and Sadio Mane score goals out of nowhere in the past few years, like ch like chances that went there, and now all of a sudden these glaring opportunities are going begging. Um, one positive I took out of the game was, barring a couple of misjudgments here and that, well, he, I'd argue he should have done better um, for the Leeds goal. I thought Ozan Kabak was phenomenal. I, like he, he was. He was constantly winning the ball and using it well. And is and it, yeah. it. But what yeah, did you make of his performance? Someone, I liked him. I liked him. Obviously, if you can cut out them little mistakes and them little times where you get caught on the ball, etc. And not caught on the ball, but caught positionally out of play. Um, I think he's he's got, he's well. He's shown he's got a bright future. A bright future, like you're saying, he'll drive with the ball. I, I remember there was one time. I think it was in the second half where he's actually driven through. He's obviously overran it, but it was nice that he was actually driving through. And then, if you at the right time release it, then then you've got a really really good a great player. And you're talking about what is it 20, 20, 20 year old, twenty one year old? Um, I think he turned twenty one in late March. Um, where so are we? Yeah, old. twenty yeah twenty one years old in on the twenty fifth of March. Yeah, Just there incredible. You go. Yeah, so um, someone who's just going to go from strength to strength, which is great. Um, I think sometimes positionally he can get he can get done, and the only thing with mm. that is, for me, Virgil Van Dijk can get done positionally because he's got the pace to get back in. I don't think he, I don't think he can afford. I don't think Kabak can afford to get done positionally because I don't think he's got that recovery. So he just needs to work on that. I remember Sammy Hippier. Never really getting outdone, never really getting outplaced because of his, his, his positional awareness. And I think he needs to work on that sort of thing. It was another game where Roberto Firmino 
just wasn't at the races. I mean, it, it felt like I, I've played a lot of games of FIFA where I am lagging and the ball is being played half a second too late or half an inch in the wrong direction. And that was like what I was watching from Bobby. It was like everything was a little bit too late, a little bit left or a little bit right. Do you think it's time for another spell out the side to, you know, kick him back into action or yeah. I don't know what, what else to uh, do now? Sad, sadly, yes. Um, we all know what Bobby brings to the team, etc. But when he's not on his game, you, 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 you kind of forget that he's actually on the pitch. And that's not a good trait. Um, to, to have one of your main forwards and forget that he's actually playing, that he's everywhere the ball isn't. So um, I think for now, I think it's, a, it's, it's a, probably a good time to, when you've got Jota playing at his best and Mane's coming in, he scored a goal, so confidence-wise will be will boost him. Salah and Salah, um, I think it's time to go with them three up front and really have a go. Because again, top four is a must. Yeah, the... the... The thing which disappointed me the most watching him was all the ideas were great. It, it was stuff like, you know, like wall passes off Jota and stuff like this, but the return from him was always behind the man mm. or it was too far in front, it was too heavy or... I mean, setting aside how poorly Liverpool played, but which Leeds United player impressed you the most? I, I think they were all brilliant. Um, I'm just fascinated at how regimented they are in the sense of they know when to press they know how to press and they know they they it's like there's there's triggers so uh Brendan if you go I know I've got to go and I'm behind you so you don't even look behind you because you know I'm already gone because you're the trigger and it just seems like they've got that down to a T when you look at that Calvin Phillips he's just phenomenal in that midfield just an engine in there breaking everything up I think right to towards his death I thought um, Salah had him on a on a sprint. He just opened up his legs and just ushered it out. That's essentially that's your holding midfielder doing that, coming across to the to the left side, which is obviously the our right, and really ushering out the ball and then getting back in the midfield, playing, getting on the ball and, and really having a go. And I thought Bamford uh, had a couple of good chances, but he never gave up to getting into their positions. Um, and then going for, I just think, I just think everything they do fascinates me um even though they concede a hell of a lot of goals but you know they're going to score goals because they they get forward at that that pace and create so many chances i just i'm just fascinated with everything they do do you know what fascinates me mate is how posh patrick bamford is <laughs> like I, I know i know that it's like he, he's a really talented footballer and I really liked watching him as a footy player for like a couple of years. Like he'd always pop up like, oh, you know, he's progressing in the championships, scoring all these goals, blah, blah, blah. And I liked watching him. And then I saw my first interview with him and I was like, jeez, like, because you never see it in you football. See it. No, you, you never, never see, see it. It. It, it. It was absolutely crazy. Um, but, you know, he had, he had some great words to say after the match and we commend them for it. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, thanks for your expert insight, Emil. We'll be talking to you soon about the Newcastle United game on Saturday. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.